Good morning, Ramsey families. This is a recorded version of the parent information session that we ran at noon and six on Monday, August 24th. Um, I'm going to go through all of the slides and explain the information and I will post this for you. Let's go ahead and get started with the reopening plan and procedures specific to Ramsey, but also district wide. Um, throughout this presentation, uh, we will discuss the mitigation procedures that the district has approved as well as the board. And we will also review um, Ramsey specific information as well. For any of you who don't know me, my name is Rebecca Gill. I'm the principal at Ramsey Elementary School. And this is my second full year that I'll be starting at Ramsey. I came to Ramsey in February of 2019. So I'm excited to start another school year here, even in the midst of COVID-19. Uh, we have a solid plan, I believe, and the teachers are on board. We've had a great staff development and we're excited to get kids back in the building and to see them virtually and get learning started again. Okay, so in the building, we all know that cleaning, sanitizing and disinfecting is a critical part of reducing the risk of spread of COVID-19. So throughout the day, and in the evenings and on weekends, there will be thorough cleaning of shared surfaces, that's desks, tables, um, copiers, shared spaces among the teachers in the main office, as well as anywhere the students are. Those touch points will be um, cleaned at least two times a day from our custodial staff, and teachers are also going to be working on sanitizing and taking time to um, allow for hand washing, uh, during transitions throughout the school day. On Wednesdays and on weekends, there will be a thorough cleaning um, in addition to the daily sanitizing that occurs in preparation for the transition of cohorts as well as just taking that time to really add that additional layer of, of disinfecting to the building. Additionally, sanitation stations will be uh, available in each classroom. And this will just be a bundle of hand sanitizer, disinfecting wipes, face coverings and gloves so that students and teachers have these items on hand uh, throughout the day. We all know that face coverings is another mandate by the state to help reduce the spread of COVID-19. So um, most recently, the Pennsylvania Department of Education did revise their mask uh, recommendations and guidelines for being in school. And that is so that we can try as a community to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. So throughout the school day, all staff, all students will be required to wear their masks, even when they're seated at their desks and safely social distanced. There will be 10 minute mask breaks at least every 90 minutes throughout the day, as well as mask free lunch, um, and then recess outdoors, students will be able to remove their masks if they're running around and staying a, a healthy distance away from their peers. Now, safe social distancing is being six feet away. Um, you are at risk of transmission when you're within six feet of someone for more than 10 minutes. Outside at recess, uh, with kids running around and having that fresh air to take in, um, they may be able to remove their masks as long as they're not having close contact with their peers. And we'll have um, recess support staff watching and, and advising students on their, um, their play outdoors. There were some questions during the live information sessions about face shields and masks. Can you wear one or the other? And the, all of the guidance that I have read indicates that a face a cloth or paper mask is ideal. The face, the face shield adds another layer of protection, but should be worn in combination, not um, by itself, the face shield. I am going to seek support and guidance from the nurse in making that final call, and I will share that final kind of decision with the families at Ramsey. Another critical question that was asked during the live sessions was, can we change our minds on hybrid if school starts and we find that the mask is just too much for our ch child to wear all day. And I advised all parents to use this two week window to really ramp up the use of mask wearing at home to see 
how it's going to work out. Um, it does take time to adjust and it does take time to acclimate. And now would be a perfect time to test how that's going to work. We will, of course, understand that students are getting acclimated and adjusted to wearing the masks, but I cannot make um, switches after September 8th. So please try to make a, a full assessment of whether or not your child's gonna have difficulty wearing a mask during this two week window. And please reach out to me to make any changes to the schooling options. I will accept changes to school option until September 8th. After that, we'll have to wait until the end of the marking period. Here are some other protocols that we have in place at the school to ensure that students remain safely social distanced. The grid of green and blue desks um, or squares are a diagram of how our desks are set up. And the, it will, for the sake of example, we'll say that, you know, the blue desk is cohort A and the green desk is cohort B. So you see that they're alternated, safely social distanced, and um, a cohort A desk is surrounded by and on all sides, a cohort B desk. So we have that set up in multiple formations um, so that desks are well spaced. We also have hall markings to help um, support a one-way traffic pattern where possible. And then if you've been in the Ramsey building, you know how wide our main hallway is. We just have it marked off in two sides so that almost like a traffic pattern, um, students are on one side going in one direction and another side going in the other. We also only have one grade level at a time eating lunch. Historically, just to keep the lunch period a little tighter, we would have some overlap in lunches, but that will not occur this year. Um, we'll also have staggered recess. Every single classroom has their own dedicated recess time. So that is also, um, that's also been scheduled. And then frequent hand washing. Uh, this hand washing campaign, campaign will be taught um, in the classrooms. Teachers will have um, explicit lessons that they deliver involving good hygiene, hand washing, and the importance of frequent hand washing. And then they will also allow for opportunities to um, have kids wash their hands before and after the transition periods. And then of course, face coverings. Our mandate around the, the cloth face covering as well as face shields um, or, or face shield um, with a cloth covering or a cloth covering just on its own is um, the protocol we have in place for that. In the classrooms, we've removed extra furniture. Any non-essential furniture that didn't need to be used this year has been removed from the classrooms in order to make room for the desk setup. Every student in the cohorts have their own dedicated desk so that they're not sharing a desk and their materials that they store in their desk are their own. Uh, additionally, plexiglass dividers are being installed where small groups may work, as well as in the cafeteria um, and just to keep an added layer of protection. And then you may have already been contacted by your teachers. If not, that's coming very soon. Teachers are um, have, and, and teachers and our PTO have done a phenomenal job at purchasing sets of materials for students so that school supplies aren't shared. But parents may be asking you to share or to provide um, additional things for your child, such as headphones. But that's not mandated across every grade level. Just look for your information from your teacher um, about what maybe additional materials are needed for your child. And then again, hallway and common spaces have signage and reminders of safe so social distancing. As far as transportation, I feel confident that the cohort assignments that were created at Ramsey um, allow for a balanced uh, amount of enrollment on the bus. I ran a report and factored transportation into the cohort planning to ensure that we could maintain safe social distancing on the buses as well. So um, we're, we're trying to adhere to that 16 or 17 rule of students on the bus every other seat. The buses will um, have markings so that students know what seats are allowed to be sat in and which are not, and students will have to wear a face covering in order to get on the bus. A few questions that occurred um, yesterday about the bus that I need to seek information about is, will students be able to ride uh, a, a different bus home to go to a friend's house? And that is not something we've addressed yet. I need to get 
some um, information from central office about whether or not that would be um, allowed this year since we're kind of in a tight quarter situation. The other question that I've received is can families sit on the same bench seat and um, if you're coming from the same household, if you're a brother, sister, or sister, sister, or brother, brother, you can absolutely sit on the same bench seat, but um, you cannot, the students won't be able to sit on, on seats with their friends. So only seats can be shared with, with families. And we've already discussed hall travel. I have a redundancy of slides in this, so sorry about that. The hand washing campaign, like I said, will be explicitly taught by teachers in the classroom for the first two weeks of school. The CDC resources that have been posted on their website have some nice lessons that we plan to use to really reinforce the importance of hand washing. And this isn't new. This is something we've always done because of flu season and colds and um, it's just good practice. So we'll ramp that up for COVID-19, but it won't be new for students. As you prepare to send your child back to school, if you're in the hybrid model, uh, there's some important questions you need to ask yourself as a parent prior to sending your child. And these questions go along with um, multiple, probably questionnaires that you've filled out if you're entering places of business or doctor's offices. But in the last 14 days, have you had any of the following symptoms? And you can see those symptoms there. All symptoms that are heavily associated with COVID-19. Unfortunately, they're heavily associated with other conditions as well, but we're trying our best to make sure that we're being extra cautious, especially when we're in a community together day in and day out, we need to take that extra caution. So please read through that text um, and, and make those critical decisions prior to sending your child home uh, or back to school. Um, if you answer yes to any of the above, please contact our school nurse, Mrs. Holderbaum or uh, Mrs. Rurko or myself, and we can help provide consultation on whether or not it's a good idea to send your child to school um, that day. Now, in continuation of this, I just wanna emphasize again how important it is for you to keep your child home if they're showing any symptoms of illness. Students in the hybrid learning model are able to retain their attendance credit if, um, they choose, if, if you choose to isolate at home because of any symptoms. So you just send an email to your homeroom teacher or myself or Miss Cindy and let us know that just to, as an extra layer of precaution, your child's going to be learning asynchronously through the Google Classroom that day. They will be able to retain attendance credit and credit for participating in assignments if they complete their work. If they're too sick to work, just let them know that you know they'll, they'll be marked absent, but um, we appreciate you making these decisions at home and mitigating um, any symptoms by choosing to keep your child home. And we'll do our best to allow um, you to retain attendance credit when possible. Confirmed, um, when students are showing symptoms at school, we will isolate them in the nurse's office and we'll call you to please come pick them up. They'll need to stay at home until they're symptom free without fever reducer. Confirmed cases of COVID, um, whether that be at home, um, or here in the building, we'll have a contact tracing process. It's very important if you or any of your family members receive a positive um, case of COVID-19, please communicate that to the nurse as soon as possible so that we can begin our contact tracing efforts at school. For in the sake of the school community, if a faculty or staff person is uh, reports that they've been diagnosed positive with COVID-19, we will follow district approved communication plans in order to maintain transparency among our RAMFAM community with honor, with, while also honoring confidentiality through HIPAA. So there is a district approved plan and we do have, um, have to work with the Allegheny Health Department to do the contact tracing should any positive cases occur in Ramsey. This, these home screening questions are, are pretty helpful. I'm not saying they're the end all be all. And of course, our nurse is always available for consult if you have questions. But they have, um, this has been posted on the PD website and it is um, kind of two separate groups of symptoms that you might, that you really wanna monitor at home. If your student is showing any one symptom in group A, it's important to keep them home. If they're showing two or more symptoms in group B, it's a good idea to keep them home. And you can see those symptoms. 
And keep in mind that if you're, if you're giving your child fever reducing medication, we're not getting an accurate um, idea of whether or not they're symptom free. So it would need to be fever um, without the use of fever reducing medication. Our policy around visi visitors isn't, um, it, it's more us trying to have as many meetings online through Zoom as possible. So meetings that would have brought you into the building where were 504 plan meetings, um, IEP meetings, and um, PTO meetings. All of these meetings will be hosted on Zoom whenever possible. We do understand that students will still arrive late to school. They'll need to be dismissed early from school. And the procedure for entering the building will be similar to how it's been historically. You'll sign in at the red box. You will have to have a face covering and you will need to sign in at the main office. We'll do our work to make sure that the, the sign in area is sanitized and clean between visitors. And students will be escorted to their homeroom if they're late and students will be dismissed and released to their parents in the main office for, dis for any early dismissals. Uh, again, we're trying to reduce the amount of parents er, and any visitors in the building, so we will try our, our best to host all meetings via Zoom when possible. If you've chosen the hybrid learning model, here's a little bit of information about, you know, what the context of that looks like. We have 213 students who have signed up to do the hybrid learning model. Those 213 students have been separated into two cohorts, A and B, and those, have been, those assignments have been announced. Assigned home um, students in grades three and four are departmentalized, so they have a homeroom teacher, but they will be taught um, their core subjects by multiple teachers. Those teachers will travel to classrooms, the students will not travel. So for example, in third grade, Mr. Kostiak is teaching language arts and social studies, and Mrs. Lewis is teaching math and science. So they will travel amongst the two classes in order to teach their subject matter. The same will go for fourth grade. Mrs. Knight's teaching math, Mr. Fleming is teaching ELA, and Mrs. Henning is teaching science and social studies, and they will make the traveling across the, the classrooms. Grab and go breakfast will still be an option for students who eat breakfast in the building. They will, be, uh, um, they will arrive through the main office and, and make their way down to the cafeteria for grab and go. Our cafeteria support staff will help support the safe social distancing and keeping kids moving in a safe distance from one another. Lunch will be hosted in the cafeteria and we are able to maintain safe social distancing through the use of um, multiple, 10, we have up to 10 tables and, and we don't have a lunch period with more than 30 students. So they will be safely social distanced, three at a table and one way into the cafeteria and one way out of the cafeteria. Um, there will be no shared materials such as school supplies among students. We will be doing library book exchanges, but when books are returned from home, they will be in a quarantine for a period of days as well as sanitized. Um, it's important for parents to know that there are a few items that should travel back and forth from school, and that is a fully charged iPad. We will have an option for charging, but we can't offer that for a whole class set. So um, in the event of, an, of a, an emergency, a student can have their iPad charged in the building, but it's important to get into a habit of making sure that hardware is charged every night, as well as a reusable water bottle. It's important for your child to bring a water bottle to school this year. We have bottle filler stations that they'll be able to use. And um, this, the, the fountain part of the water fountain will be turned off. If your child forgets their water bottle, we can provide them a disposable cup, that's no problem, but we would like them to get into the habit of traveling back and forth from school with their charger, a charged iPad and their bottle. And of course, they'll need to bring a face covering to school. The district has purchased face shields as that added layer of protection, but if you do have any masks, reusable masks that um, your child has been using, they can wear those to school as well. Um, the question again, can I, can I switch to gate if the mask policy is, or protocol is too um, rigid? Yes, you can switch to the gate program or gateway cyber up until September 8th. So thank you. Um, for the blended model, cohort A students will be in the building for the first day on September 8th. September 8th is the first day of school for all students, but the blended model um, cohort A will be in the building. 
Cohort B students will log on to their Google Classroom. They'll have some introductory activities to engage with asynchronously, and their first day of school will be on September 10th in the building. Specialists such as art, music, PE, and library, these, these teachers will push into the classroom to start, although I have a goal with the hopes of working with Mr. Brown and of course, Dr. Short and Dr. Rossi to see if we can transition back to their classroom spaces with safe social distancing and, and, and protocols in place. Their space does allow for that just with the cohort sizes we have. So we're gonna try to get them back there. And we think it's important for kids to be moving throughout the day and you know they'll have lunch and recess time, but um, transitions may be able to be brought back in for specials um, within, the, within the marking period, but we'll see. We will be following a five-day cycle again, but it is going to be a little wonky this year. The five-day cycle will be will run for each cohort individually. So cohort A will run on their five-day cycle to ensure they see the specialists um, regularly, and then cohort B. So they won't always line up, but you'll get into a pattern of that very quickly. <clears throat> for GATE students. 111 students uh, enrolled in the GATE program. You see the teachers who have been assigned to those grade levels. Those teachers K through three are self-contained. They will have all of the GATE students at that grade level for all core subjects. Mrs. Knight, Mr. Fleming, and Mrs. Henning are sharing the duties of GATE by having an exclusive GATE period once per day for each subject. So that they have um, three periods a day of ELA, math, or science, social studies, depending on what they teach. And one period of that is exclusively taught to GATE students. So they're in their classroom with no students teaching the content to GATE students. And the GATE um, program will offer live instruction on a daily basis, as well as asynchronous learning opportunities on a daily basis. Um, we had some questions around what that schedule will look like. And your teacher will provide you with a schedule. They will vary a little bit from grade level to grade level, but they will offer asynchronous and synchronous learning opportunities each day. So that's the important thing to note. The other thing that's important for you to note about GATE is that I have asked at Ramsey for teachers to create a skeleton schedule, something that they have obviously prepared for to start the school year off with, but the very critical piece of GATE is to have a welcome call with every single family. The teacher will be calling you on the first day of school to welcome you to the GATE program, to hear about what, was your, what are your expectations with GATE, what are your schedule conflicts, what, um, what um, have you kind of interpreted the GATE program to, to run like? And it's important for us to gather that information so that teachers can take that schedule they have kind of tentatively planned and to then really finalize it with optimized lesson session times that work with families. Um, teachers will be also required to make biweekly calls every two weeks to their one-to-one um, -one calls with their families. So they'll be having a scheduled reoccurring call time with parents and students to check in and see how things are going. And this is just um, a way to make sure that you're getting everything you need, you need and we're meeting your expectations with the GATE program. GATE students will also receive home learning materials. We will be allow, we will be um, coordinating the distribution of these materials through a pickup style in the front of Ramsey's building. And that will take place on September 9th from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Um, parents can arrange another pickup time um, if they're unable to, to arrange to pick up their home learning kit on September 9th. There's a lot of chatter out there on social media about what the Wednesday schedule will look like. For gate and hybrid teachers, we need the Wednesday schedule to look similar. So, um, and we also need the scope and sequence, which is the content that's going to be delivered to students to stay in close alignment, regardless of whether the learning option is gate or hybrid. This is for transition purposes. This is to ensure that if a student who's in the gate model to start transitions to the hybrid model, that they don't have any gaps in the learning or content that they've been exposed to. And the way that we're mitigating that is through um, trying to maybe 
or trying to kind of keep the Wednesday schedule aligned. So um, you'll see this is a teacher's work day on Wednesday. You've heard that the two hour delay schedule will be implemented on Wednesdays. And that's pretty close to what we're doing at Ramsey, but um, instruction will actually start anywhere from like 9, 10 <clears throat> till 1130. You see that morning instruction, asynchronous or synchronous, is scheduled to begin at 830 here, asynchronous. So what that means is if you would prefer your child up, having breakfast, getting ready for school and ready to go at 830, there will be learning options available and loaded into the Google Classroom. Live instruction won't likely occur until after 910 because that's when our school day starts. Um, and then live instructional opportunities will be available from like 910 through 1130. And then again from 105 to 330. So there will be morning opportunities to engage as well as afternoon opportunities to engage live. We do have a 90 minute window carved out for staff meetings and, and various committee meetings at Ramsey, but your teacher won't ever be on um, all of those meetings. They're staggered week to week and various teachers serve on multiple committees. So your teacher will never be pulled for a meeting every week. <clears throat> Wednesday virtual days, um, along with the schedule that I just presented, will start, um, you know, you have a little bit of flexibility as a parent to start the school day when you want with the asynchronous learning, but the live learning will start around 9, 10 and go through 3.30 with a break in the afternoon for teachers lunch and prep. But some of the experiences that will be offered on Wednesday will be intervention and enrichment, an opportunity to get the kids who maybe are struggling to catch up on skills back on track. So this could look like small group instruction, one-to-one -one check ins via phone or Zoom, enrichment opportunities for kids who have um, an interest in learning a little bit more. And um, of course, we'll try to arrange for IEP meetings to occur on Wednesdays as well. So instruction isn't, um, isn't impeded by that. Again, asynchronous and synchronous learning will be offered to students in gate and hybrid on Wednesdays. Daily attendance will still be recorded at school. It is, an, it is a state mandated reporting metric, so we do need to keep track of attendance. Obviously, kids in the cohort model will have their attendance marked when they're in the building. If for whatever reason, they're away from the building on a day because maybe they're monitoring symptoms, we will mark attendance based on activity in Google Classroom, the submission of assignments, and checking in with the teacher through email to let them know that they're working uh, at home that day. The same will go for the days that are at home, Wednesday through, through Friday or Monday through Wednesday for cohort B. Um, the, the attendance will be substantiated by um, evidence of lesson completion. So it will be important for your child to complete lessons every day, show their presence in Google Classroom and engage with the activities and with the teacher. And um, if your schedule at home has um, has you having to do a lot of the learning at home in the evenings, that's okay too. We're very flexible and we're trying to make sure that every family feels like they have what they need. If learning uh, assignments need to be submitted in the evenings, we'll just update attendance in the morning for your child. Here's what you can expect the first um, eight weeks of school to look like. This is just a loose skeleton that I presented to teachers in order to help guide their planning. And the first three weeks are truly just getting reoriented with the institute of, institution of school, getting reoriented with peers and teachers, as well as safety protocols and, and good quality routines to make the school day run appropriately. We'll also have a high emphasis on social emotional learning. Students have been isolated in their homes. They haven't been interacting as much as, as they have. And they've all been interpreting and processing COVID-19 in different ways. So they may have anxiety and fears about coming back to school. And we will be working to be extra sensitive and responsive to student behaviors when they re-enter the building and in the online environment as well. So those first four weeks are establishing quality routines, getting oriented with the use of the iPad and any of the virtual platforms that will be used. And our teachers are going to be working really hard to model the use of hardware, how students will be consuming their information in the hardware, 
in the building so that they can transfer the use of that and become more independent at home. Into week five is when we'll start our assessment calendar. This is the benchmark assessment assessments that we that we administer just to inform our instruction and students will be administered the map testing and dibbles no sooner than week five. It will be critical for us to gather data on student performance and not not there not to say, oh, you you're really struggling, but to try to find where students learning levels are so that we can begin to recover skills and close gaps. So infor informing our instruction through data is an extremely important component of education and teaching and learning. So we will need to collect that. That will be done for students who are at home as well as in the in the classroom building. There will be more information to come about the assessment calendar because your student will have to engage at home to complete these assessments. <clears throat> Technology. This is just an FYI for your important information. Um, the use of screen sharing, video, and audio recording will be utilized in classrooms to deliver instruction through gate and hybrid learning models. Teachers will let you know when those have been recorded. And at Ramsey, teachers have been guided by me to try to keep live recordings um, contained to just a single class, um, as well as um, just to students in the virtual environment, not really mixing the class and the virtual model together. And that's just to maintain confidentiality. Of course, recordings don't ever have to be utilized. They can be, um, they can be erased if anything were to happen in the, in the class or during the time that would potentially violate a student's confidentiality. But students will be, teachers will be taking extra measures to make sure that recording is done in a responsible and safe manner. But it's important for you to know that, you know, this very online platform does, does require recording and audio. And then busing has always used recording and, and video to audio and video recording just to make sure that safety is um, our highest priority and it can be utilized to review any behaviors on the bus that are called to my attention. There is an acceptable use of district technology in networks in um, there's language in the student and parent handbook, which can be found on the district website. <clears throat> All students in grades K through six will receive an iPad. If you haven't already received your iPad, M Mike O'Brown, our dis director of technology, is still coordinating distribution of this, this hardware. So be sure to look for your, at your email, make sure that you are able to pick up the iPad. If for whatever reason, at the start of the school year, you still don't have your hardware, uh, you can let us know in the main office, Ms. Cindy or myself, and we'll work with Mr. Brown to make sure you get what you need. Just a few mis miscellaneous tips uh, and information for you to be aware of as we get started with the school year. Uh, we offer a student assistance program to help support the social and emotional needs of students. We also offer a student support team to help support with academic interventions. This is just adding extra supports for kids who need it. And this is, these are, have always existed. They've always been utilized. It's run by me and a highly trained um, team of our teachers here in the building. You all know them. It's Mrs. Hayes, Mrs. Dietrich, Mr. Gold, Mrs. Martin. And we work together to add a layer of support to the classroom teachers to ensure that students are getting the interventions that they need to be successful. I do want to take a moment to just try my very best to destigmatize any of the stigma that's around um, social, emotional, behavior, and mental health needs. Kids all interpret and process and experience things like COVID-19 in a very different way. Some may very genuinely be traumatized by the, this, this pandemic, and they may um, demonstrate that through various behaviors. If we make contact with you to, you know, share any concerns about the social emotional um, concerns of your child, or you feel like your child's not transitioning or adjusting well, we can have a conversation, a confidential conversation. Parents are always involved in the decision making, and we can work to put additional supports in place. I do not want anyone to feel any kind of stigma around asking for more help for their child to be the most successful they can, they, they can be. 
So please have a conversation with us if you have any concerns. Um, again, just a reminder about bringing a water bottle to school. If you would like to order treats for birthdays or any cultural celebrations that you want your child to have in the building, that has to be done through our food services this year. There will be no outside treats from home accepted in the building. So you can work with Miss Cindy to ensure that you have the brochure that's um, available to order treats from food services. And then arrival and dismissal will run very similarly to what it's always, how it's always run. But I ask parents who are dropping off in the morning to please use the newly constructed curve, pull into that area so that we can dismiss kids closer to the building. And then dismissal, walkers and parent pickup will be dismissed at 3.30 and we'll try to get them cleared out before we load the buses. I know I'm, I'm running through this information very quickly, but if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to um, the main office. You can call Miss Cindy and you can talk to me or her and we'll make sure that we get your questions answered. As we wrap up, just looking ahead at some, some more dates that are coming your way. Kindergarten orientation is being hosted today at noon and six. So if you're a new kindergartner, you have received information from your um, homeroom teacher to, to meet them today as well as, and this will be information for parents too. Um, any changes to schooling options can be made and they will be honored up to September 8th. The next opportunity after September 8th will be the marking period transition on November 9th. The first day of school for all students is September 8th. They will either be here in the building if they're cohort A or they'll be logging on to their Google Classroom at home. September 16th, mark your calendar, is meet the teacher night for grades one through four. More information will follow as well as Zoom invitations. And then we are excited to announce that we'll be offering a parent series. The K-4 principals district-wide are working together to push out some information on those very soon. So thank you so much for tuning in. Please let us know if you have any additional questions. If you'd like to change your schooling option, please do so before September 8th. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.